Hi everyone and welcome to my review of You Only Live Twice, directed by Lewis Gilbert in 1967. And You Only Live Twice is a Bond film which is one of the only ones where I hadn't seen before going into this you know, Bond rewatch. Um, so I didn't really know what to expect other than to you know, go by what people have said online, you know, lists, forums and stuff. Um, and it's fair to say this is not highly regarded really by most people, in fact, you know. It's usually, you know, near the bottom of um, ranking the bonds and stuff like that, so I didn't have the highest of expectations uh, going in, uh, but I actually found myself pleasantly uh, surprised, really. Um, by no means one of the worst bonds, and, and, and definitely actually a really good film. I thought a really good bond. Um, and, you know, this is, at the time of making it, you know, Connery was kind of a bit disinterested, you know, um, with Bond, you know, he kind of wanted to get out round about here, and you know, the next film, of course, uh, Lazenby took over. But you know, he's still really good in this film. It's just you know, he's not quite as good as um, his performance isn't quite as good um, as the previous four uh, Bond films. Um, but you know, he's still really good in this film. I thought uh, so. The pre-title sequence. Um, this is basically showing you know an American space capsule. It gets swallowed up by. Um, what they believe to be a Russian spaceship, um, and you know, so the, the threat of World War Three breaking out and stuff like that. Um, the British government sort of have more in their mind. They think you know uh, other parties are involved um, because one of the, in fact, the spacecraft goes down near Japan, so they kind of suspect there, and that's how Bond you know goes to investigate in Japan in this film. And the opening itself, um, it's not one of the best in the franchise, really. You know, it's fine, it sets up the film, the plot, uh, you know, adds a bit of mystery, but it c could have been better, you know, could have been more engaging. Um, the title sequence itself, you know, I really liked um, the song sung by Nancy Sinatra, um, really liked. Um, I prefer, you know, the instrumental use of it um, throughout the film, the score, um, but I really liked the song, uh, and the way the t titles were put together, uh, I thought were really good. Um, and you know, the first act I, I was really enjoying. You know, I was I was surprised um, how much so and how cr good this film was. You know, to begin with, because going in I didn't have, as I say, the highest expectations. Um, you know, it just had really good action. In fact, some of the best action uh, in the franchise actually comes from the first act of this film. Uh, you know, you've got the helicopter chasing them in the car and stuff like that. Um, and the characters um, in this film. I thought were really good overall. Um, you know, we introduced to some of them early on, uh, such as Tiger Tanaka, he's played by Tetsuro Tamba. Uh, he's probably my favourite one, um, he's throughout most of the film. Uh, he's just got a strong presence throughout and, uh, you know, warm and funny. Uh, good chemistry with uh, Connery. Um, and the Bond girl, uh, Akiko Wakabayashi, who plays Aki, um, the Bond girl, I really liked actually. Um, not one of the best. But still, no, I liked her. Um, and then there's also a character called Mr. Osata. Um, he was quite funny as well. I liked him. Um, and I just really, you know, enjoyed the first act um, very much. Um, and, this, uh, you know, the middle parts, the second act, um, we see the ninja training school, um, which is some of my favourite moments. Um, just really funny and, uh, and just, you know, thoroughly engaging. Um, However, it does lead to one of the you know the gags, the famous gags, um, where Bond is kind of, you know, he's he's given a disguise to to make him look like uh, Japanese, um, and it's it's poor taste really. Over, I didn't think that was necessary. Um, he did not look any different really, apart from the colour of his hair and that. Um, it's just it's just kind of stupid. Um, you know, not like complete cringeworthy, but it, it's. Didn't work really, um, but you know these parts on the island where he, he kind of falls in love with the Bond girl, um, I thought were really well done, um, and you know it just has quite a, the way the music is used, um, you know for the beauty of of the place, location and stuff, I thought it was really good, um, and the final act is um, mainly them trying to get into the volcano hideout, um, you know the famous set piece. Um, I thought um, this was probably the weakest act overall, um, purely because some of the 
some of these scenes are a little bit slow and um, the action towards the end was slightly repetitive. You know, the action overall in this film I really liked. Um, you know, the helicopter scene, you know, where Bond's uh, taking down the other helicopters. Brilliant. Um, and the use of music there, the Bond theme was really good. Um, but this final act, it suffered from a, a couple of a couple of repetitive scenes of action, you know, not not quite as good as the rest of the action in the film. Uh, and generally, I find this with a lot of the Bond films, um, that the final act, when they actually get into the hideout of, of the villain, um, it's, it's usually sometimes the weakest part. Um, it wasn't like completely crap, you know, in this one. Um, and it was probably better than the Doctor No one, which I've talked about before. Um, but still, you know, the weakest part of the film. Um, but we're also introduced to Donald Pleasance here, who plays the villain of Blofeld. Finally, uh, we see Blofeld uh, in the flesh. Um, and Donald Pleasance, you know, uh, he's been in a lot of films uh, I really like him in, you know, The Great Escape uh, and stuff, Halloween. Um, but here he's fine as the villain, you know, he's good. Um, he's not that memorable, really. Um, and you know, he's barely in it, really. Um, but I thought it was fine. Um, it didn't bring the film down too much like some of the other Bonds, uh, Bond villains have. So overall as well, I think the, the direction was really strong in this film. Um, Lewis Gilbert seemed to have a great sense of control over the film. And, uh, you know, he balanced... It was, there was a great balance of plot and, and action and humour as well. A great script as well. Roald Dahl um, wrote the script, so that's something to know. It was, it was a good script, um, strong script. Um, aside from a couple of moments, you know, um, definitely really good. Um, and the cinematography, especially in the middle act, I really liked. Um, you know, nice and graceful, and just you know, just really nice on the eye. Uh, and the editing as well. The action scenes were really well edited, apart from maybe you know bits near the end. Um, I thought it was edited really well throughout. So overall, I think I was really uh, pleasantly surprised by this film. Um, didn't have the highest expectations going in, uh, just because of you know how low people regard this film usually. Um, but I, I thought it was, it was a great Bond film. Um, you know, not one of the best five Bond films or anything like that. But uh, definitely not as bad as as people make out. Um, I thought the action was great throughout most uh, until the until the final act. Some of the action dragged a little bit. wasn't as well put together as it could have been. Um, it was really good cinematography, great score and use throughout. Uh, I thought the middle act was, was great. Um, charming characters, um, a really strong script from Roald Dahl. Um, and overall, yeah, just um, thoroughly engaging and enjoyable throughout. Um, Connery, of course, um, while not one of his best uh, Bond performances, still really good. Um, you know, not the performance of say Diamonds of Forever which we'll get on to. Um you know, he was he was um disinterested and wanted to get out here, but he still gave a, a good performance. Um so I think I'll have to give this film a ninety one percent, um, which is a really high score for me. You know, I didn't expect to give it this. Um and, you know, I thought while it's not a masterpiece, uh, it has some flaws, um you know, some of the gags uh some of the final act, um, you know, brought it down a little bit, and the villain wasn't, you know, amazing. But um, I thought throughout most of the film, it was just thoroughly engaging. Uh, it's a charming film, uh, just really, well, really well made for the most part, and yeah, just um, a great Bond film. Um, so next up is On Her Majesty's Secret Service, um, which is another Bond um, which I had never seen before doing this rewatch, ever. So. Really looking forward to doing that. Um, so thanks for watching my review.